Greetings once again, ghoul lunatics, EC fanatic, Tommy Burns here, and today I want to talk about the infamous EC annuals, because there's a lot of misinformation that goes around about them, and if I show a few to you, maybe it can clear some of that up. They um, are very collectible these days, and some of the prices on certain ones especially have spiked beyond what I ever thought would be possible. I never really went after the EC annuals when I was younger and collecting the EC horror titles because I thought, why would I want a bunch of comics I could already have bound in a new cover? And that's exactly what these were. So here's the 1952 Tales of Terror annual. And um, as you can see, it's a square bound collection. It's not a best of though. It's not a greatest hits of 1952. It's four randomly selected EC comics bound together with the covers ripped off under a new annual cover. And um, for that reason, the contents varied greatly. There's a quote from Al Feldstein where he said, my Tales of Terror annual might have different contents than your Tales of Terror annual. And um, I have to mention that Overstreet notes that 51 Tales of Terror annual had one of this and one of this and one of this and the 52 had one of this and two of these and that's nonsense. There was no predictability to the contents at all. I have a friend who's got this same 1952 Tales of Terror annual and his is only science fiction comics. So it, it really the terror annuals were the ones that varied the most content wise because they could have suspense stories, horror comics, or science fiction comics. And um my particular copy starts off with Crime Suspense Stories number three, and it's got um, Vault of Horror 19, Haunt of Fear 5, and Weird Fantasy number six. So I've got one suspense, two horror, and one science fiction in this Tales of Terror annual. Now the science fiction annuals were strictly science fiction comics. It would be Weird Science and Weird Fantasy, in various combinations and again depending on which issues happened to be remaindered and square bound into this cover um, there were endless possibilities this particular copy has weird science 18 weird science 19 and weird fantasy 17 and 18 so kind of the cream of the crop of the mid-period new trend ec science fiction stuff so a great content listing in this book here but it was just luck of the draw You'd pay your quarter back then and get your EC annual and you had no idea what was going to be inside. The um, war titles just pulled from Two-Fisted Tales and Frontline Combat. And this is the only one where I actually have both annuals. So there were three terror annuals in 51, 52, and 53. And then two each of the Weird Science Fantasy annuals and the Two-Fisted annuals in 52 and 53. So these are the two Two-Fisted annuals. And... Um, this one I actually have two copies of, and you will notice that uh, this one is in what I like to call extremely well-loved condition. The reason for this is that this was EC artist Angelo Torres' personal copy, and um, I've got my certificate signed by Angelo Torres there. This was his copy of the Two-Fisted Annual, but because I have two copies, I can show you what I'm talking about. Angie's copy begins with Two-Fisted Tales 31. And so the first story in Angie's copy is Blockade. But then I look at this Two-Fisted Tales annual, and the first comic here is Two-Fisted Tales 30. And so the first story in this copy of Two-Fisted Tales annual, 1953, is Bunker. So same comic, same cover, completely different content listings. So it's kind of interesting, and it's fun for EC fans to know what the contents of their particular copies are. And um, the most complete listing of contents variations goes all the way back to 1974. So in the complete EC checklist in 1970, there was a compilation of content variations because Joe Vucinic, who did the updated versions of Fred Von Bernowitz's EC checklist, was obsessed with annuals. And he had tons and tons of copies of the EC annuals. Um, the yellow cover from 1970 is the first time that there were contents variations listed, and then it was updated for this blue cover version in 1974. So here you can see content variations of all of the EC annuals that were known at the time, and a lot of people like Jerry Wiest and Roger Hill and multiple collectors contributed to these listings because they all had EC annuals that had different contents than each other's EC annuals. Uh, when you see on the EC Fanatic Club on Facebook where we talk about known and unknown content variations, we're talking about 
known to this edition. So of the five EC annuals I've got, I think three of them are unknown variations according to this listing, and two are known variations, meaning that the contents are the same as someone else's copy. But um, that's the EC annuals. Four remaindered copies of EC Comics, covers ripped off, square bound into a new cover, and sold for a quarter for four comics. Um, it was funny in the EC Letters pages at the time, they would say these are not for the longtime fans because they're reprints. And there was a misconception for years that still continues to this day that these are reprints of the best stories of that year. They're not. It's not a collection. It's random four comics. So hopefully that answers some questions about them. And if not, I just have fun talking about EC Comics. So I'll dig you guys later. And if you have any questions, just ask in the comments below. And... Um, We'll see what I can come up with next. Cheers.